Thank you for having me this morning. Good morning, Nigerians. Well, good morning to you, Right Honorable uh, Samuel. Let's uh, quickly set the ball rolling now, shall we? Yesterday, the protests began nationwide. In some states, it started off peacefully and then became violent. In other states, we saw that there was absolutely no protest. While surprisingly, in states like Adamawa, where in the, in the nations, uh, in the states, in the state capital, we had a procession of people who were thanking the president for relative peace that they have enjoyed in the state in the last uh, a couple of months. What do you make of this uh, development around the country? Well, just like uh, I pointed out yesterday during the program, um, one of the reasons, like I said yesterday, why we had low turnout at the inception of this protest was because government had tried its best to discourage people from coming out to, uh, to protest, especially with threats of the protest being hijacked by hoodlums and people that would cause problems. And just like I said, Later on, in the middle of the day, we saw how many other states joined in and we saw how the whole situation turned out. Uh, for those who were processing, um, processing in Adamawa and uh, saying that they are thanking the president for relative peace, well, they may have their reasons for doing that. But the general overview of what is happening is that Nigerians are not happy. Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians are suffering. And the government should be seen making deliberate and concerted effort to address the issues that Nigerians are raising in this protest. Because if they don't, I fear that this protest will continue and like the fears have been all around, it might degenerate into something else like it started already yesterday in states like Kano and Kaduna State. So we must, be, we must see our government actually taking deliberate steps to see that the tension is doused and that the demands of Nigerians are addressed squarely. The ones that can be addressed in the immediate, it should be done. The ones that we, the government would have to seek for more time, let's say 30 days, 60 days, to see that they are addressing these issues, they must do that. Unfortunately, in many states where we saw protests, I can't say I can recall any state where the governor in River, in River State, Governor Sassim Nalai Fubara in okay, front Fubara, of the government house yesterday addressed, addressed with protesters. the protesters. Apart from him, who, which other governor have we seen doing that? So you're well, saying well, you, well, need, you need for more governors to step up? Well, ex except the, the FCT minister who held a press briefing yesterday. We're not talking about press briefings. We're talking about addressing people who are on the streets. People who are hungry. That's what I'm talking about. Because you can't sit in the comfort of your office or your conference room and then re making press statements telling people to leave the streets when you have not interfaced with them to know what their challenges are. This is what I'm talking about. We have governors in the states where these protests are ongoing. What have they done? These are your people. These are your citizens. Talk to them. Now, beyond some of the governors, we've also seen some appointees within the government. The Minister for State of Youth Development was also at the ground here in Abuja. National, national, uh, now, the national now, Stadium. Now, many look at it from the relationship most of this either elected or appointed leaders have with persons on ground. We see Sassimila Lai Fubara in a state where many people were saying he shouldn't have even come out or into factions that are not really supporting him. He believed in his relationship much like the Minister of State did with the youths. But this has also seen some allegations thrown in that direction. Now the FCT Minister has also thrown an allegation for certain persons who were seen dialoguing or even giving some food items to protesters that have been part of the sponsors of this protest. Do you think that this is the reason why some persons are skeptical about coming out into the streets either to talk or to even offer any welfare to protesters? Far from it. Very far from it. That is not a reason why they are not coming out. Unfortunately, we all know our political leaders in this country and we know how most of them are self-centered and selfish. The reason why many of them are not coming out to say anything is because of their own selfish interest. They are afraid that coming out to ident identify with the protesters will do them great harm in the next elections that are coming in 2027. And for that reason, they are being careful. But they must know that power resides with the people. And if the people are on the street protesting because of the high level of hunger, insecurity, and heightened poverty rate in Nigeria, then they should be seen 
addressing the people, talking to them, and addressing the issues that are raised in this protest that is ongoing. Yesterday you were here in the studio when we all saw uh, the protesters on the streets, you know, demonstrating what they came out to do. It started off very peacefully at the Moshuda Biola Stadium, Stadium. with uh, Barrister Deji Adeonju uh, and his people. And uh, later on, it degenerated into the reports that we now see. How do you distinguish between people who are protesting and uh, pressing their demands to the government and people who are only rioting for the sake of looting and anarchy? Well, this would have been a lot more easier if our security agencies had played the role that they were supposed to play. Like the protest in Lagos yesterday, the one that they left um, Ikeja Bridge and they were going to Ketu. If you saw that protest yesterday, in front of the protesters were police, civil defense officers with their vans. And behind the protesters were also police officers escorting them to the venue of the protest. Now, that protest did not degenerate because we had security agents with them helping them to ensure that people who wanted to hijack that process didn't have access into the protest. The but unfortunately, that's, what, that's not what we have seen in other places. Instead, we have seen police officers and even security agents trying to stop the people from peacefully protesting and making their demands known to government. Like what happened yesterday at the Three Arms Zone, the Federal Secretariat. We saw how policemen were shooting um, tear gas canisters at protesters who were not armed, who were just peacefully, peacefully, making their demands known to government. If we must be able to do this, the security agents themselves, they know those who are hoodlums. They know those who are genuine Nigerians who are protesting to make home their demands. In the what in they the should heat? do, yeah. what they should do is ensure that they are on ground to protect the protesters and ensure that whoever tries to hijack the process and cause mayhem or problem is arrested and taken into custody. But not stopping Nigerians from peacefully making their demands known to government. Well, yesterday we, we saw uh, one, of the pro one of the rioters uh, that was wielding a knife that got arrested. Uh, that is a good move. That is that, a good that move, is yes. Move, firstly, but also, on the other hand, when the entire thing escalated and, and the protest degenerated into violence and chaos, uh, the members of the Nigeria police tear gassed these protesters, used their water hoses on them to, to disperse, disperse them. them. Shouldn't there have been a better way of handling the matter instead of it turning into such a chaotic you know, situation? The, the, the thing is that as Nigerians and as leaders in this country, I think our leaders deliberately would wait for issues to degenerate before they take actions or steps to address them. Because like I said earlier, what the security agencies would have done is to be on ground before even the protesters assemble. Address the protesters. You are here to make your demands known to government. Yes, we understand. And we know that you have the constitutional right to protest. But what we are saying is that, please, help us to help you make your demands known to government in a peaceful manner. We are going to accompany you on this protest. But please ensure to report anyone who is found trying to hijack this process and cause problems. I am sure that Nigerians are not stupid people. Because we want to make our demands known, we would definitely oblige the security agencies to ensure that we report whoever wants to cause problems in the course of this pro uh, protest. But unfortunately, that's not what we have seen. Like the guy who was wielding a knife, he was arrested and taken away. And I saw videos of um, some young people at Maraba who had sticks with them as if they were going to fight. And then they were, they were arrested by uh, police officers. People like that are the ones who come into this protest and try to cause problems. And sometimes, as young people who want to make our demands known, sincerely, we believe that these people who have come to cause problems in this peaceful process of making our demands known are sponsored. We may not have first-hand facts, but we have seen the, the, the kind of people who come to do these things. They are hoodlums. People whom you can literally see it written over them that they have been paid to come and cause chaos in a peaceful process that should make our government see that people are in dire need of modalities 
initiatives and commitment from government to address the issues. In line with what you have just said now, uh, do we now agree that perhaps, just maybe, uh, the statements by the Inspector General of Police for the protesters to remain in confined spaces and protest should have been listened to by uh, the protest planners? Now, that is an issue entirely on its own. If, for example, in the FCT, the venue earlier marked for this protest was the Eagle Square, if the Commissioner of Police or the IG of Police had not hijacked that square by putting their armor tanks and vehicle and their men there. That is the venue that would have been used for this protest in FCT. And you know how secured and confined that place is. But they refused. Instead, they hurriedly got court orders preventing the people from making use of <laughs> a venue that should be open to all Nigerians from doing this. And then, like you are saying, if Nigerians who are hungry, who are angry, and are not satisfied with the way government is running, eh, are in a place confined, whether you put them in a cage or in a box, They'll find a way they will out. find their way out. Just like what Deja Dianju told the uh, uh, Commission of Police FCT yesterday. If you want us to go into the stadium to protest, you would have to carry us into the stadium. You have to carry us because ordinarily, ordinarily, our people know, our people know that if they had allowed the protesters to use the Eagle Square as the venue for this protest, it wouldn't have degenerated into what we're seeing now. Now, there are challenges with people who stay outside the outskirts of the FCT, especially along the Nyayamaraba axis, axis where it went violent. Such people look at transportation constraints. They also feel they have a right to their grievances. But the challenge it is such areas are most over time overwhelming for security outfits who have to be deployed to quell whatever issues that arise from such areas. Now, having designated centers, we saw in, in Plateau State where there was no particular designated area, but it largely was peaceful with even persons of a different faith protecting the others whilst they said their prayers. Yes. Do you think it is more of a... Uh, I don't want to use the word cultural or ethnic bias towards the way grievances are expressed. Largely, sections of the country that had turned violent are towards the north. In the south, southeast, a lot of the states are even boycotting it. But why do you think that this disparity in the way Nigerians in such places express their grievances? Well, the truth is, over time, Nigerians have this lack of trust for our leaders. And every part of the country has its own peculiarities. Now, the northern part of Nigeria is a very volatile part of this country, so that if you allow a little spark in those places, it will become something else. It will become a wildfire. And that's why I'm still saying that government and security agencies would have done due diligence before protesters gathered. At the designated point of protest, the security agents are already there to address the leaders and even the protesters themselves. We would encourage you to do this, but please do it peacefully. But that's not what we have seen. Um, in Kano, so many things have been destroyed. Properties have been destroyed. That's not what well-meaning Nigerians want for this protest. But unfortunately, unfortunately, because of maybe the level of exposure and education and whatever, we have people who are mostly hoodlums attacking innocent Nigerians, looting their properties, and destroying even government inf infrastructures. But I'm telling you, if the government had done the needful, the needful, this would not have happened. Let, Let me say this. No Nigerian, no Nigerian enjoys hitting the street in protest. And I would say that if things were going on well in this country and people are comfortable, I am telling you, nobody would waste his time, effort, resources, and energy to be on the street protesting. The only demand that Nigerians are making, let the cost of living be reduced. Now, whilst that is one of the major uh, demands as itemized on the list, we saw of uh, 14 demands. 
many are also looking at the economic downturn in terms of the amount said to be lost in these days of protest. Now, we're hearing that it's beyond what the organization of private sector is going to lose. The stock market and our global image is also suffering losses at the moment. The president has also saddled his presidential economic coordinating committee. Do you think at this time, in line of these concerns, the committee needs to begin to look at some of the obtainable demands and have a way of addressing them to curb these losses? This is what the government should be doing since yesterday. Since yesterday, knowing that this, this protest can cause all of this damage and harm to the country, what you should be seen doing as a responsible government is trying to prevent it from happening in the first place. This morning, there have been calls all over X, Twitter, for the president to address the nation and for certain things to be done in order to douse the tension that is currently on with this protest. And I hope that the president will listen and do that. Some persons who have the ear of the president and also appearing on the show this, this morning uh, would beg to differ. They said that it wouldn't do as much as a... What's the word Honorable Clitus used now? Well, well, it wouldn't be a magic wand, wand that, to, that would yeah. wipe off the Nobody problems. Nobody's expecting the president or the government to perform magic. We're not stupid people in Nigeria. What we need from government are concrete commitments. I'll give you an example. In the town hall meeting that was held day before yesterday, the Honorable Speaker of the House of Reps made two commitments. Even though I have some reservations about the commitments. But he made two commitments. That over time, they are now realizing that they should engage more with young Nigerians to get feedback from the population about government policies and programs. And that because of what is happening, he has promised that the House of Representatives will have two engagements with young Nigerians every year, at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. This is to enable them as our representatives get feedback from the citizens as to how government programs and policies are running. And then the second, he said that he is going to appoint four persons, right, from the youth groups to be like liaison officers between the House of Reps and the youths of Nigeria. Now, what are your reservations to this? Now, my reservations is that, number one, on the appointment of four people, four young people, that in itself will become a problem among Nigerian youth groups. Who will be grappling for such. grappling for such opportunities. Seeing that in that town hall meeting, there were over 50 organizations there. So where do you pick these four people from? It becomes an issue on its own. Now, let's come back to the president. There are demands that have been made. Some people have called for the reversal of for, subsidy. for a subsidy. Yeah. It should be brought back. I, for one, do not subscribe that it should be brought back. Instead, we should be seen as a people and as a government that is serious, channeling the funds that are saved from the removal of subsidy into fixing our refineries and having them working. If that is done, it will reduce the cost of petrol price in Nigeria because we will not have our refineries producing fuel for us such that we don't have to go and imp import fuel from well, outside Nigeria. One person who Nigeria. has tested the waters is already crying about cabals in the oil space. That's what I'm saying. From May 29, last year, the president made an announcement that first subsidy is gone. Monies have been saved. The question is, what have they done with these monies? What we saw instead was the federal government giving state governors more money. And unfortunately, unfortunately, because of how Nigerian gov governance system is, even these governors cannot account properly for these extra funds that they have received. Now, instead of sharing this money to governors, why not use those monies from subsidy remover, fix our refineries, the Kaduna refinery, the Wari, and the um, uh, Potakot. Let them work. Let them produce fuel for us as Nigeria. Now, that's this, the logical this, thing. This, this is I, I, a kind of worms that, that has just been opened. Uh, the, the recent rift between the Angote refinery and an and, and and the the NNPCL. NNPCL. But quite commendable, the president has issued a directive to NNPCL to sell crude to Angote refineries and other others in Naira. 
Perhaps. Well, well, this is this is a step in the right direction, if you ask me. But what is your take on this? The truth of the matter is, as a person, I'm speaking for myself. Where I've gotten to, I hardly trust anything government says until I see it practically working out. Because we are used to hearing promises, commitments, verbal commitments to things that should be done practically in Nigeria. We would wait in the next few days to see if the NNPC will actually sell crude to Dangote as instructed or directed by the president. Then we will know that they are serious about what they have said. But again, I think on two occasions, the uh, commissioning or launching or whatever of the Potako refinery has been shifted. Only God knows why. But the president promised that before the end of last year, that refinery was going to start producing, <laughs> producing for Nigerians. But we are in August of the following year, and nothing seemed to be happening. Now, beyond the mechanical completion of the first phase, which was recorded in the Patakot refinery, we're looking at a refinery, one of the largest single train refineries in the world at 650,000 barrels per day capacity, already churning out diesel and jet A1 fuel. Yet an agency of the government, the NMDPR, questioned the quality of the diesel. It was subjected to lab tests, which proved that it is one of the best in the world. Do you think that some of these bureaucratic bottlenecks, I would like to call them, even if we have these refineries coming on board, and just already asking the question, how are we sure that we wouldn't have some agencies or some persons in government who would be working in the opposite direction as to where our state of production is? The truth is, one thing that I believe as a person about leadership is, whoever is at the helm of affair of any kind of leadership is responsible for everything that happens in that sphere, whether good or bad. We have seen people over time in government working against government and trying to sabotage the effort of government. But the question you ask is, as the leader or as the person in charge, is it that you are not aware because every now and then people keep calling out people who are working in the opposite direction to what government is doing to address the issues or the plights of Nigerians? What we should be seeing as a people that would give us some level of hope and confidence that our leaders are people who listen and act when they ought to, is that these people are brought to book. These people are dealt with. But like you said, there are so many bureaucratic bottlenecks here and there. And if we must make Nigerians have hope again in the government, then we must be seen taking care of these issues. I mean, renewed hope agenda is the mantra of the current administration. And, and now, once we look away from the subsidy issue and revamping the refineries, this way hinged on one of the promises that would bring down the cost of transportation in terms of alternatives. CNG, CNG. buses were highlighted as one of the cardinal policies of this administration. Now, the government has complained about the assemblage time and whatnot. Many are saying in the interim, what are some suggestions we can look at in terms of bringing down the cost of transportation and maybe inadvertently the cost of commodities in the markets which are hinged on the cost of transportation as well? Well, for me, for me, I think one of the things we can do in the immediate, one of the things that would really calm the minds of Nigerians yeah. is to see practically the cost of governance reduced. One. You, uh, it's another issue. You have the House of Representatives where they said that they are also going to be saving 50%, if I'm not wrong, of their salary in the next six months. And people were questioning how much they get for allowances besides their basic salary. That's the question. How much is the salary? In the House of Reps, the salary is 1.2 million. So 50% of it is 600,000. And they are 360. Which is very insignificant to, you understand? to what they want to do. You understand? Do the calculation yourself and then see what... It is. Yes, we commend them for taking that step because they actually happen to be the first set of people in government who are taking that initiative to cut down on their salaries. So, but the truth is, yes. the truth is, if and if we are serious about this, there should be, we should, we should see our government deliberately cutting down the cost of governance. Well, now, well, let, let when, me, when you say, when you say cutting down the cost of governance, 
Uh, in what ways, practically, beyond saving salary, beyond saving salary, can they cut down the cost of governance and not just doing that, but channeling those monies Money. into Pro adequate and proper projects? On Wednesday, yes, the town hall meeting at the House of Reps. When we finished, we were coming out, just approaching the exit gate of the National Assembly. We were stopped for the Senate President and the Deputy Senate President to go out of the National Assembly. I lost count of the vehicles. These are just two people. In, in, in the convoy? In the convoy. These are just two people. You needed to see the numbers of vehicles that these our leaders are running in. The number, the, the number is, is countless. And all these vehicles are fueled with government money. These vehicles are bought with government money. Yes. And the people who accompany them in this convoy are paid with government monies. These are the kind of things that Nigerians need to cut down. You, you, need, you need to cut down. Like you, you wonder, this is, who, is going to, who is going to kill you if things are working well in Nigeria? 